Today I'm going to be assembling the Televez DAT 790LR Mixed Long Range UHF VHF Antenna. The only thing longer than the name of this antenna is the antenna itself, and make no mistake, it is big. It is also heavy, and let me tell you, there's one thing that you will need, and that is a friend, an associate, any sort of other person to help you. This is a two-person job, not just because the thing is heavy, and really the truth is, in the global scheme of things, it's not incredibly heavy, but it is unwieldy and it's going to take you a little while to put it up, even if you follow some of the shortcuts that I'm going to give you as we get started. You're going to feel like you're in for it right away when you see that step one has four subparts and a bunch of capital letters on it. Trust me, it's not as hard as it sounds. What they're trying to tell you here is to attach the three extension poles to the already pre-assembled antenna. There's a gray one, there's a black one, actually there's two gray ones. The point is, use the picture of the finished antenna to figure out exactly what goes where. Use a 10 millimeter wrench, one comes with the thing, but I also just like my own tools to make sure that everything gets tightened up. Here you can see I'm skipping forward a little bit to show you that I'm finishing with all three pieces at the same time. Don't forget that on the other side of the antenna assembly, you're also going to put on that really small extension pole that you were probably looking at and not knowing what it actually did. There's this little indication at the bottom of step one that shows that you really what you're trying to do is take these bolts and actually have them dig all the way in flush into the antenna pieces. This is going to feel weird because it's actually biting into the antenna and aluminum itself and that's not going to feel right but trust me that's how it's done. Luckily step two is easier. All they're saying is to take the top and bottom sets of directors, push them down in the slots so the three are kind of the center post and the two directors are exactly even. That's how you're going to make it work. By now I'm figuring the original art director got in trouble for putting so many different subparts into step one that they actually broke out one thing into steps three and four and that's putting those white braces on the directors. This might take some trial and error but first make sure that those three posts are exactly even with each other like you saw in step two and then just sort of preset the bottom piece in place. Once you do that, then you can set it in place, put the top on top of it and screw it in. It's going to take you a couple of tries. I'll be honest with you, I actually left a lot of footage on the cutting room floor where I have had to try this a couple of tries so folks don't feel bad about it. Once you do have it in place though, get the screws in, tighten them up and you'll be all done with these two steps. I'm jumping out of order a little bit because I'm going to have you put the mast adapters on before you attach the braces. This actually makes a lot more sense because then you don't have to try to fit them over as you're assembling them. Start by threading the U-bolt into the brace, sort of like what you see here. Take one of the black plastic spacers and put it sort of in the middle of the brace. You don't have to be too picky, except it's nice if you can have them both in the same spot more or less. They just snap right on and then you can take the entire assembly rather than taking it apart and you can slide it right onto that plastic brace. When you do, then you can just soft tighten everything back up and go on about things. The key is to make sure that both mast adapters are pointing the same way because if not, then honestly, you're not going to be able to put the mast on. Once you've got all that done, it's a pretty simple matter to take the two braces and attach them with a couple of bolts and nuts and your 10 millimeter box wrench and then you'll be all set with steps 5, 6, and 7. You see it gets easier as we go along. In steps 8 and 9, you're going to be assembling the pieces that hold the reflectors on. What they're really trying to show you here is that you're going to end up with four relatively similar pieces of metal. Two of them have a threaded inside and two of them do not. You're going to start by putting these plastic tabs on the threaded inside and when you're putting them on make sure that they are oriented like you see in the picture because it's very easy to get them upside down. Once you've got them in place soft fit them to the end of the antenna and attach them on with a bolt. Repeat this process with step 10 and the good news is, you're halfway done. Time to take a break. Are you back? Great. I personally find it easier to do the rest of the installation with the antenna actually on the mast, which is why we're jumping to step 15. 
Have your friend help you carry the mast and the antenna all the way up to the roof and do the rest of the assembly there. You'll be glad you did because it's very hard to get everything up once you've got it all the way assembled. Too heavy, too much of a pain in the neck. Once you've got it up on the mast, it's going to look like this. Maybe not completely level. That's why you can use these bolts, loosen them slightly, just slightly, just enough to allow you to level the antenna. Make sure that the center beam of the antenna is perfectly level unless you're trying to aim over something. In this photo, you can see that the antenna is actually level, although the camera operator was not. Jumping back to step 11, what we're going to be doing is inserting the reflectors. You swing out those black plastic parts and push them in. The key is to make sure that you've got the part that's widest, closest to the center mast of the antenna, because otherwise these two horizontal metal posts won't line up. Try it, go slowly, and it'll go fine. Once you do the top, it's very easy to do the bottom. Just swing it up, and again, you kind of hear it click in place. The same thing happens with the rear set of reflectors. Those are going to be considerably easier compared to the front set because they're really almost impossible to put in backwards. For the rest of the video, I'm relying on the diagrams because it turns out you can't really shoot video on top of a roof with a regular camera. It doesn't work. So what they're just telling you here is to thread the cable in and prepare it to get connected. They do give you a screw on F connector and a weather boot. If you choose not to use these, if you choose to use regular cable that you've already assembled, you need a separate weather boot that you're going to have to supply. The whole point of step 18 is that you need to connect the antenna cable before you snap the cartridge in place. Practically impossible to do it otherwise. Super easy if you don't attach the cartridge before you attach the cable. Which is why once you've got the cartridge and the cable attached, it's very easy to slide the cartridge behind the yellow plastic part that's already assembled and then slide it into plates making sure that these little lips go right into the notches that are already on the antenna body. When it's done you'll hear it click in place and that means it's going to be water resistant. Once you've got the antenna installed it's going to look something like what you see in step 20 and unfortunately I'd love to tell you that's the end of the video but folks there's just two more little bits and we're going to be done after that. If you choose to use the built-in amplifier you're going to need to connect the wire from the roof to the left side of the power injector and the wire to the TV to the right side. If you're not connecting a second TV, I recommend using a terminator in the inside connection. The last piece, and I promise folks this is the last, you've been really patient watching this assembly video, the last piece is to make sure that the antenna is properly grounded. Consult your local ordinances or national code to make sure that you're following all the steps you need to take to ground the antenna. I'm not gonna tell you what those are because they differ from city to city. Once you've got this antenna on the roof, and yes, I know it's going to take you 30 to 45 minutes to do all of it, you'll be really amazed by its power and durability. You'll be glad that you finally spent all the time that it took to put it up on the roof because you're looking at an antenna that's going to last you years and years. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I know this has been a long one and not a whole bunch of animations because some of the video didn't turn out. So we'll see you again next time. Meantime, shop Solid Signal.